Hello, I am Kiatrik. I am a trainer for making games with Construct2. I am a moderator on Skara.com forums. I'm an indie game maker and game designer enthusiast. I'm making this video tutorial today for Envato Game Dave Touch Plus. Let's make our new project in Construct2. Click New Project in the Start page, and this opens the dialog Select Template or Example. You can see several templates and examples that you can explore later. For this tutorial, we simply need to go with a new empty project. Click Open, and here is your new project. You have on the right, in the Project tab, the layout may be a bit different. I've modified it to my taste is you can do it by simply clicking and drag dropping the windows so in the project tab you have the structure of your project with the properties of the project itself the layouts which is what we can see in the middle this is the layout view and the square the white square with black border is the current layout it's where you will do your visual design so you can have several layouts and then you have event sheets in the, if you click the tab uh, the tab at the top you can see it's our event sheet that's where we will put events and code the logic of our game for now we will need to set a few properties for the project to start with so select the project and the properties are on the left. We will modify the name, shoot them up. Author, you can put your name, I'll put my internet handle there. You can put a description. This field will be used essentially at the end uh, when exporting at the end. For now we can put um, manic like shooter then the window size it's a project that is asked by game dev touch plus they asked to be able to embed the project in the web page so we will go for a size of 600 by 450 you can see in the layout view the dashes represents the size of the project and this size when you run the layout or press the F5 key will open your browser and you can see here the size of the project is definitely 600 by 4 450. Our layout is a bit big at the moment. I won't need all the height so I will simply stick to the same height as the project but for now the width I will change to 1337 and you will see right now we'll go into layers it's okay double click in the layout view which will open the insert new objects dialog in which we will select a sprite and insert this sprite as you can see the yellow tooltip layer 0 tells you in what layer you are currently creating the object. For now we have a single layer so it's okay. It opens the animation tool. We will load an image and right now you can see I'm already in the folder where I've downloaded the images of Game Dev Touch Plus. The links are in the web page and I've also resized far back. This is the sprite I will be using for now. It's a bit big to hold visible right now. So hold down the control key in the animation tool and move your mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out. And you can see we have the whole image there. Set origin and image points. You can see this image, it's the center pivot if you want. Press the seventh key on the numeric keypad you can see that the image point has been put in the top left corner you can also directly set the coordinates 
in the fields X and Y on the top. Close the window and as you can see right now the object has been added to the layouts. We will modify the name to background. It's generally a good thing to change the name of your objects because it makes more sense than sprite, sprite 1, sprite 2, etc. With background I know that it's my background sprites. I would set the position to 0, 0 because I want it to cover all of the layout, which is the case. And that's it for the for the sprite. Select the layer. I will change the name right now to background. In the same way I know that so my background layer will hold and be the layer at the bottom of everything. And another interesting tool is to lock the layer. This way I can select any object that is above this layer without risking of selecting the background. If I still want to select it though, I will go in the project tab and select the object directly. Now I will want to add a new layer on top. It's the star field layer and I will add a new object which this time is a tile background. The tile background compared to the sprite objects will reproduce the image it has. Let me show you. We will open, select the star field 500, we close, we put it in position. As you can see for now I have only one occurrence but if I expand and as you can see the texture just repeats itself so I can expand it over the whole layout. And now another interesting thing I can do with this I will also lock the layer, go back to the background layer and change the value of parallax to 25. What this does and to see it also we will set the parallax in editor to yes. As you can see now the both layers are moving on a different speed giving uh, an impression of death and as a right now I'm doing a continuous scrolling I will add some event in the event sheet. The event sheet is always read from top to bottom so the order in which you will put your events will have a major impact on the logic of your game. For now there's only one thing we want to do that is every tick to move our layout on the right a bit every, every tick. So right click in the event sheet, add an event, or click on the add event. It opens the add event dialog in which I will go into system every tick and I will add an action system scroll to X. I will use the current scroll X coordinate and add 8 multiplied by DT every tick. DT is a um, system variable which allows you to make sure that whatever the power of the CPU the game is being played on won't affect the um, movements and stuff like that. Whatever the, the power is it will always move by the same amount of pixel every second. So let's preview and now you can see the background is moving by itself the stars are a little bit faster but the background itself is still moving we have our continuous scrolling right now in our next video we will be adding a player to our game